name is Peter Thomas Keevery and I'm Matthew Halpin and we're here today for the second part of our 24 hour series. We're going to spend the day with vet Connor Garrity from Garrity and Neary Veterinary Practice in Mount Bellew, County Galway. So Connor, tell us a little bit about the practice. Okay, so the practice, um, I've been in the practice since uh, 2000. The practice as a pedigree going back to the 50s um, and I bought a practice originally off Joe Connolly in Ahaskara and amalgamated then with Jerry Neary in Mount Bellew. So, um, the practice is three vets. It's predominantly large animals, some equine work, and uh, we don't do any small animals as such. So um, it's mostly cattle, sheep, dairy, and beef, and um, and some horse work, which is seasonal. Good. Connor, was something was veterinary something you always wanted to do from a young age? Yeah, so I'm from a farm, uh, local enough to here actually. So uh, yeah, I suppose from from the age of 14 or 15, I always wanted to be a vet. Yeah. Um, whether I change my mind or not, again, we'll see. But. Um, uh, You'll stick out for the next while anyway. For another while anyway, yeah. So, Connor, tell us a little bit about your average day as a vet. Yeah, so there is no average day really. At this time of the year, it's springtime, so um, it's very busy. We have uh, the phone um, typically rings maybe between 60 and 100 times a day. Um, there could be up to 20 calls a day yeah, for each vet in the practice at the moment. Obviously, when the spring is over, that will, re- will reduce. Um, it's a blend between routine work, um, some factory work, uh, TB testing, and calls. But at the moment, there's at least one and a half vets full-time on calls. There's a part where we don't go through figures and and yews and lambs and many you lost and many you sold and that. Why do that again? There's another bit of pressure. I'll just do the bits. The, the are you do the lameness or the, or the parasites. It's so the lameness. Lameness, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we might look at a few lame yours and Don't. we might just go through the few bits so around on the farm and I'll ring you later on in the morning. Is it in the front? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. He's sick man with lead now. He is, he is. He's a bit of watery mouth too. Has he? Yeah. There now. Oh, yeah. So yeah, there now when you feel shaking. Ah. Is he rattling? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ah. So, you familiar with that, lads? Ah. 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 He's a watery mouth here. If you rattle him, you can hear the, the skull rattling him. Yes, you can, yeah. yeah. No. No. We're um, no. treating a lamb that has septicemia. He's very dehydrated. So we're just giving him some IV antibiotics. And uh, we're going to leave some fluids for Arthur to give him a stomach jump. Right. And um, put him under a lamp. So if you, if, you, uh, mm. if you look at him here, he's got a, the signs of watery mouth. And his eyes are going back in his head and you can hear him you can hear the fluid rattling in him back foot is it yes it is is it this one Connor? so what are we looking for here Connor? what you're looking for is what we want to do is diagnose the, the, the type of lameness that he has Okay, so the last two we caught were skulls, Aye. which is common enough in the in the shed. Now you can smell that if you can if you can get a smell of that. That's foot rot. Aye. Okay, so that, and the foot has gotten kind of misshapen a bit, so that's a chronic foot rot, you know. Right. There's a little bit of skull there as well. Yeah, you can see that there. Aye. So how do we treat this? So um, when we treat that was with, with an antibiotic. You want to get a look in there, Matthew? Um, you can see that there. And then there's just the foot has gone misshapen. So, like some of these are untreatable now. I'd be saying this one is probably should be lined up for a cold the next time. Aye, after aye, you know, should get no oil in yeah, there. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, aye, um, you could treat her with beta or aye, or, aye. or something like that. Just well, to, yeah. first, right? yeah, well, you can. Yeah, but they'll be all aye. right for to be okay. Don't they'll be all right aye. to do them, you know. Aye. But if, if if you treat them fairly quick, aye. They won't be spreading around to the other ones. I know, know. I uh, Yeah, we should come as soon as you can. Yes, and I'll text you when I'm on the way there. All right, sir. So, look. I don't think. What's the story here, Connor? When she's down and she's quite nervous looking, so. Um, I'm just going to roll out calcium and, and glucose first. We'll reassess her then after that. A lot of nervous signs now. It could be, it could be meningitis, um, but we're gonna just roll out the calcium first because she's down 
for that and the long course of antibiotics so maybe possibly probably five days each when would you be hoping to see a turnaround well in um, with this sort of a condition you'd, you'd really need to go the full five days of antibiotics you know it's not a job for one shot so we'll prescribe uh, we will give them the first shot now and we will prescribe um, another four days each Okay, so we're doing a prescription here now um, for this for this antibiotic. So all antibiotics have to be prescribed, and um, we do them electronically. So um, it's all it's, it's all held on the system. Then, and we can email it out to the client, or we can print it out here on on, on our little printer. So um, this has to be done for every bottle, does for, it? For every everything that's POM, yeah, that has to be done. And that farmers will enter those in their records as well then. That's right, yeah. And if you're in Borbia or uh, even, well, they have to record it anyway, but if it's around Borbia, they'll be acutely aware of that. Yeah. So. There's a whole system involved. Yeah, so all this is stored in, in, the, in the computer. We can email that out then. What information will be contained on this label for the farmer? So, basically, it's instructions of what to do with the, with the drug that he's after, um, that he's been prescribed. Uh, withdrawal periods, dosage rates, and etc. You know, so it's a little instruction booklet. Or yeah, and then I put the prescription number on the label on the bottle, so you can match it up. So that's the prescription number and instructions: 10 mil IM per day, and and the date. So. That's the paperwork side of it. That's the paperwork, it's important. As well as everything else. Uh, this yo has, has, has ring womb, she might be a little bit before her time. Right. So she's going to be just maybe a week early, even though she has she has some milk. Right. So we're just seeing now, will, will she, with gentle um, manipulation, will, will the cervix open? And if it does, we might be able to ring the lamb out behind. And if it doesn't, we might have to do another, another option, we'll do a caesarean, but we'll see where she's, she's soft enough, actually. So, um, what would be a possible cause of ring room? Yeah, it's um, it's just something that happens, really. You know, uh, sometimes if it's if they're early, or you'd often see it with lame sheep, or you know, sheep that are just maybe not, um, not in the best of form. Okay, so um, the cervix is opened. Um, so it's definitely not a normal presentation the head has gone back and the legs are down which is often indicative you know it's, it's often a, an indication of maybe an abortion or something similar so I'm trying to snare his head with the rope So, he's alive at the moment. Sometimes it is if they're premature and start thrashing and can't get their breath. So, Pascal, I'll leave you with him there for a the moment. Yeah. That's typical of what you get when he's long and mature. 
This is just a little bit before his time. Um, oftentimes they're harder to, to lamb than, than full term ewes because uh, they just tend to be further in in the sheep and the sheep isn't as ready for lambing as, uh, as, as if she would if she was, if she was ready for if she were up to time. So. A friend of mine that works in the south says he doesn't work with sheep because everything you do with sheep brings you to your knees. <laughs> Might be fair <laughs> Okay, so this is a bigger lamb than the first guy. Right, so what's in your hand here now? Okay, so I have some cotyledons from this lambing. So this, this, is, this is an abortion really, because it's the, the O is before her time. And even though the lambs aren't, uh, they, they don't appear to be infected, uh, just for, for completeness sake. At the start of lambing, we're going to take samples to see is it anything nasty like enzootic abortion or toxoplasmosis. Right. So we're, we're, we're going to send these for PCR testing down to farm lab diagnostics. And in a few days, we'll find out if there's anything, if there's any pathogens. Right. So it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a handy way besides bringing uh, um, lambs and um, lambs and, and cleanings all the way to, to the regional laboratory. We can just send a single pot, and uh, we get back quite good results. So we'll see what comes back. Okay, so this calf is born at four o'clock this morning. And he's panting and he's you know reluctant to stand um and you can see that he's shaking now what, what i'm feeling here that you guys felt a minute ago is that his ribs rib cage is broken so there's, there's one two three four there's, like that. yeah there's four to five ribs broken there at the costocondyl junction and the reason that happens is when the head comes out some people jack or lever on the jack um, you know, too soon, and then the rib cage is in the in the pelvis, and what happens is that uh, that's that's the cause of of, of, of 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 those fractures. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to cover him for painkiller. You know, so we're going to give him a long-acting painkiller. We're going to give him some antibiotics because he more than likely will get pleurisy, and we'll also give him um, something to liven him up. And the owner has gone up there for some colostrum, and, and, and we're going to shoot him with colostrum as well. Give him the full works. Give him the full works. The cow. Again, she was down for most of today. Uh, she had a hard head and she, she did stand up, so we're happy enough. But we will give her anti-inflammatories or yeah. painkillers. We will cover her with antibiotics because she has contusions here behind. And, uh, you know, we'll probably put her on a course of both for four to five days. And Connor, how confident would you be after a calf with four to five broken ribs that he will survive okay, or come so through? If we can, if, 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 if they don't perforate his lungs, he has a chance of healing up. But if they do perforate his lungs, I mean, he's going to be very compromised. But he will hit, uh, his, his left hand side is fine, but his right hand side is, is very compromised. He's a big, heavy calf, which doesn't make it any easier because to get him lifted up, you're going to have to catch him by the. It's probably going to be the heavy ones that yeah, are. Well, it's going to be the heavy ones that happens to, you know. So, I mean, with good nursing care and um, drugs, I mean, he, he has a fair chance. But a lot of calves die due to these sort of injuries that happen, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see he's quite big, so I mean he's yeah, he's, he's at least half. 65 kilos, isn't he? So yeah. yeah. Connor, what's okay. up with this lady? So what you have here is um, basically a, an eye infection, you know, commonly called pink eye, usually uh, usually um, transmitted from from um, um, STEMI. Semi grass in the silage. Basically, it's an infection on the surface. So we're going to put in a depot of, uh, of antibiotic here under the eyelid to, um, to try and 
treat this for five to seven days. You can see now it's relieving that depth of antibiotic there. So that's going to cure, treat that and cure it over so the space it, of a week. It generally will clear over the week on Generally it. will, yeah. Generally will. Yeah. So what you have here is four cows in the one pen. So it spreads from cow to cow then, especially at the barrier or your, or your uh, brief close contact. Scanning cows, why are we doing this? Okay, so these cows are between four and eight weeks calved so far, and uh, some of these cows might have had issues. This one held the cleanings for a day, she was passing points. So basically, we're doing a pre breed scan to determine if there's any issues that we want to uh, treat before before the breeding season starts. Would you recommend all farmers to carry out this process? Yeah, so if you, if you think out the cows that haven't been seen in heat, or ones that had issues, uh, maybe reach any percentus or botrytis. It's a good idea to pick those out um, in advance. So if you're recording heats before the breeding season and you don't have um, you don't have recorded heats for this number of cows, then um, it's a good idea to do it. And obviously you're going to scan these cows again after the breeding season? Yes, yeah, so it will be scanned after the AI. You know, so, um, there's a winter mid here, 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 so there will be a bit of both. So we'll have some cows that are AI and some of the pre She's okay, Tom. She's clear. Uh, she's got a CL there, so you can give her an extra message later on. Let's get this off here now and see. Right, Connor. So it's been a it's been a very busy 24 hours. We've been with sheep, cattle, um, for right to, right through from herd health to individual treatments. We've even spent some time in the office. I suppose that's just some of the day to day work of a of a vet. Yeah, I mean it's it's never the same, and it's, well, I suppose you know the the, the the calls are always different, and over time, I suppose it it it, it ended up to be routine. But um, you know, it's, it's the time of year really, and um, you don't know what's going to come in or when it's going to come in. You know, so. Always, always have the phone in hand. Always has the phone in hand, yeah. yeah. Listen, Connor, myself and Matthew would like to thank you an awful lot. Like It's been a really informative day. Do you know, we've seen a real broad, a broad array of sickness and animals and mm. how to treat it and yeah. dealing with customers and dealing with paperwork. You know, it's, yeah. it's really busy, like, so you have a great business and just like to wish you all the best in the future. Thanks very much, lads. Thank yeah. you for having us. No problem. Anytime. Thanks. Thank you.